kidney stones, also called renal calculi. So let the name help you here. Hard calcified stones inside the renal. Or names with lith, meaning stone. So urolithiasis means a stone in the urinary system. Renal lithiasis, a stone in the renals. And ureterolithiasis means a stone in the ureters, basically those tubes that connect the kidneys and the bladder. Now, stones are typically made of calcium or other waste products in the urine, like uric acid or protein, but the NCLEX doesn't really test on this, so I wouldn't try and memorize all the different types of stones. Now, for the risk factors, men have a higher risk for getting those kidney stones typically due to dehydration. So just think of old men drinking coffee and not enough water, as well as urinary retention from BPH, that big prostate. So the memory trick we use is BPH. Just think of a big prostate that holds back urine. Now for the signs and symptoms, write this one down. Extreme pain is critical. It's like a knife in the back. They even say it's equivalent to giving childbirth. Now we also see sweating, nausea, vomiting, as well as a rapid heart rate and breathing. But the priority here is the pain. So Kaplan states that a priority intervention for urinary calculi with right flank pain is to, number one, relieve the pain. So we give meds to relieve that pain. Now, as the stone moves down the ureters, it sort of stretches and scrapes the tube, causing blood and more pain. So the urinary analysis will see hematuria, which is a big NCLEX tip, basically blood in the urine. So RBCs will be present in the urine analysis. You like that, did you? Well, click here and get access to over a thousand fun visual videos, 300 study guide cheat sheets, and a massive quiz bank loaded with detailed rationales to test your knowledge. Neatly organized in our new app. Click here to get started for free. And we strain all the urine to catch stones and analyze it. Now for procedures, we always start with the least invasive first. So we use shockwave lithotripsy, which is basically shock waves to break up large stones that are stuck inside the kidney, breaking them up into smaller stones so they can be easily passed. Now in terms of education, after the procedure, write this down. Increase fluids to help flush the stones from the body to the potty. And normal expected findings after the procedure is bruising and pain on the procedure site, usually in the flank area on the back and side, and blood in the urine is normal up to 24 hours after the procedure. No need to report. Now the key here is not normal is fever or chills. This is definitely indication of infection, so you must teach that patient to contact the provider immediately. Now ATI mentions expected findings after a lithotripsy. And the answer is stone fragments inside the urine, completely normal. Now, if the stones are too big and the shock waves don't work to break up that stone, then we go more invasive and cut that patient open. Surgical removal of the stones include a percutaneous nephrolithotripsy, also called a nephrolithotomy. We basically stick a needle and scope into the renal pelvis to break up and suck out those big stones. Now, after the procedure, a temporary nephrostomy tube and bag is in place, and this allows any loose stone fragments to pass. So, an expected finding is to find these little loose stones inside the bottom of the bag. But the bad news here is that the drainage tube can get clogged with these stone fragments. So, the key priority, write this down. We need to maintain tube patency. We need to keep that tube unclogged to keep that urine flowing. The worst case scenario is that this little tube has a clog and now urine backs up into this injured kidney recovering from surgery. So write this down. Gentle irrigation of the nephrostomy tube with sterile, normal saline, may be necessary to keep the tube free from clogs. Kind of like a water slide, right? You need to wet it down so those stones can slide around or basically slide out. Now again, we do this first for any drainage that is stopped completely since clogged tubes are very serious. The goal here again is to keep that urine flowing. So ATI mentions, teach the patient to report back pain to the provider for the client with a new nephrostomy tube. This can indicate clogging or even infection. Now in terms of treatment, we treat the pain and flush the stones. So number one, we administer analgesics for the pain. 
And number two, we flush the stones with a lot of fluid intake, about three liters per day, to dilute the blood and flush those stones, as well as decrease the risk for a urinary tract infection. We also strain all the urine for stones, and we use ambulation to walk and move around to facilitate passage or movement of those stones. Remember, not bed rest. Write these two things down. Not bed rest and never massage the flank pain. This can cause more damage to the kidney area. Those are the two big no-nos that every exam loves to test on. Now for diet, we eliminate the cause of the stone. So restrict protein, those animal meats, and we limit purines. So red meats, organ meats, and even beer. Hesse even touched on this, saying that urolithiasis teaching, we restrict, key term, animal protein. All right, guys, that wraps it up for this segment. Don't forget to take your quiz and download the study guides. Thanks for watching. For our full video and new quiz bank, click right up here to access your free trial. And please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. Last but not least, a big thanks to our team of experts helping us make these great videos. All right, guys, see you next time.